Hello and welcome to this fresh and new episode of Point Counterpoint, our weekly debate uh, show, uh, which we uh, where we delve deep into issues concerning Goa, and very seldom have we uh, had a debate uh, where we feel that the intrinsic nature of Goan communities is at stake by an attempt on the part of the ruling establishment. And the matter is extremely serious primarily because it seeks to undermine the nature and the spirit of Goan land ownership as it was always meant to be and which it still exists at this point of time though the system has encroached and, and eaten into the very vials of the uh, the spirit of the communal system. Uh, before we get into the the nature of this particular uh, attempt on the part of the government, let us for people, uh, especially those who are not initiated with what the Kaminidad system is, and since this telecast goes out to people beyond Goa, it's important to know that Goa always had a very unique system of land management and village management, which predated the Portuguese by hundreds of years. So it's not a Portuguese system. The Portuguese may have codified it in the year 1526, but the point is this existed and it essentially looked at or was all about land ownerships controlled by the community, uh, community, mainly initially mainly by the male heirs of the founders of that particular village. But the system was not just uh, patriarchal. It was much more than that. It was about managing your, your lands, your fields, your water bodies and to a large extent the Goa of today which is still worth fighting for exists because of the Comunidades and the protection that they have given. Primarily because if the Comunidades were not there, our buns would have not been protected, the saline water of the, the, the sea would have ingressed into our fields, our agricultural system would have been, been uh, completely destroyed and it is this uh, protection, I mean the, the need to protect this ecosystem that we are all uh, fighting for. But why are we here today? I'll just uh, answer that question. Uh, after I introduce uh, one of the best uh, panelists that we could have uh, we could have had and I'm really privileged that all of them are here. On my left is advocate Nigel Costa-Frisch. He's a very senior lawyer and has also uh, litigated and fought for a lot of these issues for uh, uh, for not just his clients but obviously because of the belief that he holds in some of the things I've just uh, mentioned. Next to him, Father Visit Sao Montero. He of course uh, needs no introduction uh, because he's one of the few authors of uh, a book on Comunidades called the Goan, Goan Village Communities. He was also the former president of the Comunidad of Jua, where, uh, where again he was very involved with a lot of these issues that we are uh, sp speaking of. And uh, last but not the least, we have Jean Philippe Pereira, who is the South Goa uh, Comunidad Forum member, and he's also the attorney of the uh, of the uh, Nagua uh, 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 Nagua uh, Comunidad, right? Okay. So the thing is. Uh, now, all of them are obviously very well equipped. You can also see one vacant uh, chair next to Jean Philippe. And that chair was meant to be occupied by uh, Advocate Yatish Naik, the spokesperson of the BJP, who uh, who has so far not, not yet turned up because of some preoccupation, but he has said he's going to be here. But we would really like him to be there because, uh, you know, he's not a government spokesman, but obviously he is a member of the of the ruling uh, BJP which initiated this. Uh, I'll just take two minutes more to, uh, to lay out the basic the subject at hand. The government, I think in the last, on the last day of May 2022, uh, sent a letter under, uh, signed by the Under Secretary uh, Revenue to all the Comunidades uh, seeking their feedback on some draconian amendments that they uh, that the government uh, wants to initiate through a bill and to amend key sections of the Comunidad Code, which would basically, in short, undermine completely and destroy whatever control 
the people in the community had over Kamnidar lands and essentially sign a document which would be an abject surrender of all that the Kamnidar stand for and still stand for and stood for all this way. What I will do is that rather than me uh, detailing this, I would like uh, uh, Nigel to first uh, lead us and take off from where I'm leaving off, essentially on what this uh, notification is, not what this letter is, and uh, and what it entails. Okay, so the amendment uh, proposes various, I mean, the, the bill proposes various amendments to the Code of Komdads. Uh, some of them are required. For example, it, there's one provision which says that now the unmarried daughters of the deceased uh, gaon cars or zone cars, etc., could receive the the uh, zone in the as an heir of the deceased uh, member hmm. uh, that's required that's in keeping with the, the constitution of india where there is now a right to equality among the sexes etc hmm. uh, there is the main quarrel according to me which uh, which we would have about this bill is there it seeks to introduce two new provisions in the code of komdats in the form of article 334c and 334d of the Code of Kumdats. Now, th Article 334C provides that the government, with the prior consent of a concerned Kumdats, may acquire land by way of a long lease for uh, any government department, a statutory body, uh, uh, for example, a municipality, etc., uh, for a public purpose. Now, so therefore, it looks innocuous, this, period, this provision, uh, where, of course, one could say that, uh, why are you upset about it? The government has to take the consent of the Kumdad. But there also the remains the the issue remains about compensation. How are you going to determine the compensation payable to the Komdats for this uh, land that you're going to take on long lease? Because this provision does not introduce uh, the uh, Land Acquisition Act of 2013, the right to fair compensation and transparency in acquisition, where there's a, a laid down method for determining the compensation payable to the uh, landowners whose lands are being acquired. Now. Uh, in the absence of there being any clear indication as to how the comp the compensation is going to be determined, the there could be some room for uh, manipulation or arbitrariness. I mean, that's the, that's the apprehension of many of the members of the Komdad because they say that uh, if the managing committee is not faithful to the the, the Komdad or mm -hmm. or uh, they don't adhere to the code, they could arrive at some kind of understanding with the government where they agree for a lesser rent. So you know, they, we should have one should have rules in place. Which which uh, state and provide how the compensation this kind of so this is three thirty four C yeah is going yeah. to be determined yeah, yeah. now three to thirty four D uh, is draconian in my opinion because it says that the government can acquire without the consent of the Komdad land up to five thousand square meters this for, is what is very important for certain yeah. public projects yes it does say that the land will be the compensation will be payable as per the right to fair compensation and uh, rehabilitation act fair enough but then uh, the Komdad is a landowner. It's not a government body. It's not a, a government institution. So therefore, as a landowner, you have to have the, the consent of the landowner before you're going to acquire the land. Now, if you're going to resort to the process of land acquisition under the statute, that's the right to fair compensation, then you have to follow the entire statute right from the beginning, call for objections, etc. So hmm. this is one uh, provision which, according to me, is draconian and uh, needs to be uh, discarded. The other which uh, people would have some apprehension of is the proposed amendment to Article 372A, which speaks of regularization of unauthorized occupation of Komdar land. Now, as we know, this provision is already there, but the cutoff date was 15th of June 2000. So uh, the structures which were there as on that date uh, could, uh, could, uh, could be regularized uh, subject to fulfilling the criteria. But now the government proposes to substitute that date by another date. But in the bill, that date is left blank. So, I mean, we don't know what date is going to be inserted. So that has to be there in the, the, the draft bill before you, uh, the Komdas, so the Komdas can have their say and either object or whatever. So these in some substance is what, according to me, are the, the questionable features of this Father, uh, amendment. For, uh, so, yeah, yeah, thank you. Anil. Father, before I come to you, I'd just like to bring Jean-Philippe on one issue, then I'll, I'll, I'll get to Father, uh, you know, uh, after that. Uh, Jean-Philippe, uh, based on what Nigel has just said, my contention here is, firstly, firstly, does the government <laughs> have the right to even move these amendments that's point number one i mean do they do they have the wherewithal or do, are they empowered to move these amendments taking into account 652 section of the code of Kamnidas, which has laid down various steps and it also calls for a meeting of uh, 
all the Kamlidat bodies once in five years to discuss all these amendments threadbare and their word is ultimately final. So ultimately, you know, what we are getting into is the right of the government to do this because right now an undersecretary revenue has moved this. And what is interesting and before I go to you, I must tell viewers here that the revenue minister has turned around yesterday and given a statement saying that he is not aware of any of these moves which is being made by his own department where his undersecretary revenue has sent a note to all the Komnidats which you has or you have already received as a, as a, as a member yes. of the Komnidat yes, and I you have. even reply, replied to it. Yes, right. And, and the bill that they have atta attached, the amendments that they have attached along with the note is dated January 2022 with the name of the previous revenue minister Jennifer Montserrat yes. which means that the, gov the government had thought of doing this even before the elections and but they are moving it now but obviously Babush Montserrat's name is not there his wife's name is there as a previous minister mm -hmm. so Babush Montserrat's signature is not there on this Absolutely. however the under secretary revenue who comes under his department has moved it yes. so anyway if you can just uh, take into account all that I've said so yeah. first and foremost mm. if you go <laughs> By the past record, hmm. you'll observe that the government is to, without consultation of the Komnidats, acquire land. Mm -hmm. And that is to apply the Land Act of Land Acquisition Act of 1894. Right. is to fix a compensation of 5 rupees, 8 rupees, 12 rupees, and we Komnidats had to fight in the courts for higher compensation. Right. Now suddenly they realize. Mm -hmm. When the new uh, act came of 2013, right, right to fair compensation, mm -hmm. they realize it's going to be very expensive right. for them to acquire this land. Mm -hmm. So they try to come enter from the back door mm -hmm. and bring this Article 334C and D. Right, because under Article 334D, there is a limitation of land. Only 5,000 square meters for which they will be paying the fair price. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, under Article 334C, which they want to amend, they can take a huge chunk of land for a very less price. Right. Because they are not going to acquire it. They are just getting a approval. Do you also suspect that they could manufacture consent? Correct. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is a possibility. In all possibility, there are cases which have happened in the past. So right. that is, in all probability, this will definitely happen because there will be interested parties in in bribing, right. to bring the members, giving their benefit, uh, benefits in the form of money. So definitely that is going to be a possibility. I'll bring, well, I'll bring in Father for a minute because yes, he hasn't yes, spoken, yes. then I'll come back to you. Father, based on what what you're essentially saying, and you've got into the entire letter and spirit of the of the of the comunidades and and the laws thereof, my question again to you is that does the government actually have the right to encroach into the system and bring about these amendments without the proper procedure under the comunidad code being taken? Number one. So this is the letter of what I'm saying. What about also the spirit of what the Komnidats were meant for and how that spirit has been eroded beyond recognition? If you can just go into that. The Komnidats <coughs> in Goa, we call it village communities or Gaonkaris, are <coughs> uh, in Goa from times immemorial. Right. They lived in communities and uh, the whole system was uh, for their agriculture, living, and other administration also. So they distributed land for housing, for agriculture, and uh, the rest also they managed their lands. And the interesting point is, they did it when no ruler was in the land. Right. They themselves managed the affairs. Absolutely, correct. From times immemorial, when the time, uh, ruler came on the scene, Practically, that did affect them because they were managing everything. Correct. And every ruler who came down <coughs> through the centuries, right, they accepted that land was theirs of the Komunidad, not not. This is a very ruler. important point that every ruler yeah. or accepted that the land was theirs, yeah. and the community also never allowed any ruler or any government yeah. to dictate them. Yes, and absolutely. carried on their village yeah. life as the way they yeah. did. Absolutely. And in the, as far as the Portuguese are concerned, they respected that. Yeah. Yes. So, they, their laws or rules were based on the customs and usages of those people. Right. Which came from centuries. And the 
uh, when the Portuguese came here, the Alfonso de Albuquerque ordered, uh, after meeting, the, after they told him that the land does not belong to the ruler, right. he inquired with the other uh, rulers and found it was true. And he ordered the compilation of these customs and usages. And it was compiled in 1526 yes. in the foral of Alfonso Mexia. That became the law of Comunidades. And uh, in the last century, there were three codes. One in uh, 1905, second 1933, and the last in uh, 1961. But these codes were not prepared by the, uh, any government or any state. They were prepared by the uh, very uh, Gaukas or the Comunidades. Uh, in the what is called Convention of Comunidades, and the last code we know <coughs> the commission, committee or commission was appointed, not committee, commission was appointed to prepare the code in 1959. Right. They worked the full year 1960. And what they had done, the government approved it and uh, what is called uh, um, promulgated it mm -hmm. through uh, the Legislative Diploma mm -hmm. 2070. Right. It is not that it was done by the government. It, they only approved what the, go, uh, the rulers had done, or the actual uh, communities had done. Right. So the state has no role in, to play in the communities as such, even the amend or anything. And the only thing where the government is supposed to give Do. is administrative tutelage to the communities. Absolutely. Right. To see that the rules which are contained in the code of communities are observed. Right. And the uh, weaker sections also are not uh, kept aside. Right. Through the administrator of the That is the role of the government. Government had no role to, uh, to uh, what is called, amend the code or uh, bring new laws. Right. right. That is right. what I know from the government. Okay. Nigel, I'll just uh, draw your attention to Article 652, which we've all been discussing in the Code of Comunidades. And I will uh, refer to a recent... Uh, recent judgment where you were the advocate for the petitioners. It was basically the, the Gaunkas of uh, Cerula, Sukur so, mainly. Cerula, yeah. Uh, Cerula. The Gaunkas of Cerula versus the state of uh, Goa and, and others. Uh, where the uh, the court very interestingly said that they will not strike down the Correct. Uh, so, uh, Article 6, 652. No, no, no. What, uh, what, uh, the challenge was twofold. One is yes. that there were certain provisions, the the validity of certain provisions of the code, amended code were challenged. Right. Uh, particularly with regard to the elections of the attorney and the president of the Komdal. Right. Uh, now, those uh, challenges, the court said that you get before us a live claim. For example, if there's any election which has been held in pursuant to the amendment. And right. According to you, it is invalid because the provision is not valid or not mm. validly enacted. Mm. Then you bring that case before us. So they said, right now we won't touch the right. this aspect. Correct. The other the other challenge was that the government does not hold these conventions, which mm. it's required to do in terms of Article 652 mm. of the components of the right. Gaunkas. Right. And our case was that it has not been held for a long time. And in fact, these are very important because such things have to be discussed That's at correct. the convention. That's correct. So that the uh, the High Court recorded the statement of the Advocate General that these conventions will be held in accordance with the code. Right. So now the government has to hold it in terms of... Yeah, I'll just go to Jean Philippe to delve a little bit more of this. But I'll just read out Article 652 for the benefit of uh, our viewers. It says, every five years in the city of Panjim, on second Sunday of January, a meeting shall be held of all the delegates of all the communities to deal with matters of general interest to them, to foster its progress and purpose to the Governor General. Some measures in this in, and some measures in this connection. So this was basically says that every five years, all the communities are going to meet to deliberate on all all issues in the uh, on the second Sunday of January, and the whole process will start. From the month of November, December, the different bodies are going to be constituted for this particular meeting. A commission will be appointed and so on and so forth. I'm not getting into all That's the correct. details here. Yes. Okay. Now, as Jean Philippe was pointing out, that this particular requirement under the code is very important because all any amendment that needs to be sought or any change needs to be sought yes. has to emerge from yes. this particular convention, yes. which is going to be held. Yes. And whatever the government is doing now, is not strictly within the realms of the code of code of Kamnidad and under 652 because 652 needs to be followed 
for anything else to follow thereafter. If you could just explain on how this particular convention has not been held for years from 2011 onwards. See, the last convention yes. was held in 2011 in October. Right. Why? Because there was an order from the High Court. Mm -hmm. Because somebody went to the court and said, here, for so many years there were no... Mm. Uh, Article 652 convention was not held. Subsequently, in 2019, there was... Uh, the exact committees were done. We had a meeting. Right. But the agenda was not prepared properly. And all the issues that we had to take up in the meeting hmm. uh, couldn't be completed within up. one day. Right. So the general body, that is all the members, said we need to have a longer discussion Convention. of two or three days. So we will postpone it. Mm -hmm. this, the meeting is in force till today. The Correct. Article 52 meeting is still today in it's force. It's not concluded. Even it is not concluded. Then there was a second meeting uh, time, the date was given. Hmm. That time there were COVID crisis. <laughs> okay, okay. So still it is in force. If the government, what I have to say is if the government has any intention of bringing these amendments, mm -hmm. before the assembly they can, there is no need of a uh, special be introduced at the convention. since it is yes. in force, right. they can straight away bring it. That's to the, take people, the, the members' opinion, the uh, communities of Goa, which, who, uh, each dele uh, there is in each community there is one person who delegate, represent, yeah. delegate who represents in that. Right. Take the inputs Correct. and mm. then because they are the ones who represent the community. Right. Absolutely. Right. So they, their views yes. have to be taken. So, if, we, if we look into the history of the community system, I'll ask you and Father as well uh, after this. See, the issue is that did any of y'all who are very senior senior citizens ever envisage? the intrusion of the state into the Kaminidad system in a manner that it is doing now, number one. Number two, what happens, what, you see, earlier you had Gaonkaris and then the Gram Panchayats came over and they uh, kind of took over some of that role, either directly or indirectly. Uh, and then from the from the Panchayats, the control has gone completely into the hands of the political system rather than the community system. So, did you all, how do you kind of firstly map this whole uh, whole change from a community system to a politically controlled system and the movement from say the Gaonkaris to the Panchayats and then now it has gone even beyond that. If both of you can just take us through this, uh, this journey. I think so. Hmm. Uh, it was in 1997 when Dr. Wilfred Mishkita was the revenue minister Yes. that uh, he brought reforms mm -hmm. into the Komindad system. Right. The first thing that he did was to bring uh, administrator who was appointed by the government. Right. Earlier, all the administrators were private administrators. Mm -hmm. So they did not have dictates. They, the politicians could not dictate terms to the private administrators. Right. So Dr. Wilfred Mishkita brought government uh, deputy collectors, uh, junior skill officers, on officers right. as administrators. Right. That was the day mm -hmm. when the government started controlling the powers of the administrator's office. Right, right. And due to that, whatever we are suffering today is because of that change. And I was one of the persons who deposed in the commission, okay. the Kumnidar Commission, where I said we should go back mm -hmm. to time when we have our own administrator, who is a senior person who has had enough experience in the managing committee of the Kumnidar. Right. So he should be appointed as the administrator. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, what, uh, the code, whatever, the commission, mm -hmm. had uh, the proposal had to be presented in the assembly, which the government is refusing to do, though they were, uh, it was directed by the high court. Right. They, they are not prepared to present that. And one of the suggestions in that commission mm. was that uh, widows of the zone cars and the uh, uh, daughters, uh, uh, what you call that, Unmarried, unmarried daughters, mm. should get the zones. Right. This was right. one of the suggestions. Mm. So they have just taken one or two things from there and presented, and presented but they don't right. want to bring the uh, recommendations of the Community Commission into the assembly. Father, my next question starts with a with a quote, and I'd like you to reflect upon it. Uh, architect Arminio Ribeiro, which whom all of you know, has one once wrote in one of the pieces on Community He actually said. 
that those committees that had assumed responsibility for maintaining bonds and river networks worker welfare all that that the communities did were undermined by interference from a parallel administration structure helped by a political system now this has happened over the over the time and this parallel structure has undermined it can you can just elaborate and explain how this undermining has happened this undermining has taken place the of the whole system of kumdadis right from the introduction of goa raj panchayati raj act well the, there was only one authority formally they introduced in 1962 the panchayati raj act and since then they undermined that because the land belongs to the kumdad and the, uh, the ruling is by somebody else, right another right. body right and there are that's why there is lot of this misunderstanding hmm. the the land has been taken over by the very uh, in collusion with the uh, legislative uh, mls yeah, yeah. let's everybody. say the political system yes, let's put it that political way, yeah. system yes yes and in combination with the panchayat this mm-hmm. formally when it was introduced it was some 25 30 years it was not that corrupt right but formal afterwards it became totally corrupt right 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 i know there are panchas Uh, in some uh, in these villages, they've got seven, eight, nine, ten flats, and who knows how many in their relatives' name, mm-hmm. plus fleet of cars. Cars. I have confirmed this. I don't want to disclose anything. Right. Not one place only. So right. Right. <laughs> if one goes to see still further, MLAs have grabbed so much land through various means. So this is how they have. somehow undermined the system second and these lands are supposed to be under the control of the community that yes, yes they are community yes, lands yes. community lands community they lands, are yes. not meant mm. for mm. Uh, personal mm. lease right right although they are to be allotted according to the needs of each uh, yes uh, village ga- community right <coughs> so they have grabbed it mm-hmm. second thing they are undermining came with the form of agriculture tenancy act right although the aim of the act is uh, to increase the agricultural production it has decimated totally with the agriculture this lands were grabbed in the under tenancy act buildings came up so this all with the uh, with the political institution no? and the communities were helpless yes yes, yes. and Hmm. their income was from that uh, what is called agricultural uh, this yeah. income yes sidao in the form of sidao yes so there are communities who have no income today hmm wow well, uh, the president i was the president of jua community yes. no income zero balance hmm because nothing comes there our uh, main in so what about through the sale of crops the sale of crops agriculture produce culture. that's what they t- uh, hardly any anybody say, uh, yeah. sows today no mm-hmm. no uh, right. there is no agriculture practically yeah because agriculture activity is also kind of gone down or Completely diminished agriculture yeah. is yes. that yes. practically right not right. only the the mm. uh, great damage they took over from the hands of the communal the system of manos through yes. gates yes yes some income was coming from there and they were that was spent in the mandates of bonds and other needs hmm. but that also were taken from their hands so communities became bankrupt practically so one cannot manage uh, blame the communities for all this they have interfered the uh, the government practically mm-hmm. and third one uh, third one was uh, agri- uh, what is called land revenue code under form on and 14 So if there is so much land grabbing in Goa and more and more coming up, You're right? It is because of Form 114. Absolutely. They right. enter anybody enter their their names there. Mm-hmm. That became uh, this what mm. is called the mm. uh, manipulation <laughs> of Soviet. Yeah, the current land grabbing that we are highlighting oh, yes. is mainly because of yes. that. Yes. The, and yeah. that uh, yes. Soviet court. Although the Supreme Court has got uh, this saying mm. that. Le- Uh, land revenue code or revenue form is not title document. Right. Right. So, the yeah. documents are not title. Right. Right. So, despite that, all these things are running in Goa. Yeah, it is assumed as a title document, even though it is not. Correct. 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 Mm-hmm. So, since then, we have lost everything, and now the the result of these two uh, these all three people are fighting against each other. Mm-hmm. We were living as brothers in the community. We have become enemies of each other, mostly in mm-hmm. Goa. Mm-hmm. even 
uh, agricultural tenancy act it is hereditary brothers are fighting against each other who is going to sow Correct. that's why it has adverse impact and the uh, third thing uh, land revenue code form uh, 1 and 14 house is belonging to everyone one has got his name there so they are also fighting <laughs> <laughs> so what is the impact of all that <laughs> so basically the absolute ownership or absolute dominion that was envisaged <laughs> for uh, self governing community <laughs> bodies <laughs> that absolute dominion has tra- been transferred from <laughs> the communal dads to the political power yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that, indirectly, yeah, indirectly. Yes. so the do absolute dominion exists but yes. it has it has moved to a different different yes. power center or, or a power master the government of the day has decided to Uh, move amendments to the code of communities to essentially pave the way for a complete takeover of communities land with or without consent of the people uh, in one particular section there is a there is a move for consent in the other section we have very clearly said that any land under 5000 uh, meters can be taken over completely by the government even without the uh consent of the communities of course in lieu of a comp- compensation but that's uh, that's another point but uh, so this undermining of the communities system in a, in every which way has been explained very uh, very eloquently in the, you know so far in this session we look into one very important aspect see we spoke about uh, article 652 of the code of code of communities where it is it is envisaged that there will be a convention every 5 years where the communities will decide on all matters and seek uh, or suggest different kind of amendments and proposals for a better functioning of the communities to the to the to the system at hand now uh, jean philippe i'll start with you apparently from what we have been discussing that process not only have these conventions not been held but the very important suggestions that are lying with the government on the basis of the conventions that have that have been held the two two that are that we are talking of even those recommendations are simply gathering dust yes uh, for the last absolutely. decade or so absolutely which absolutely. further says that even the little uh, exercise that has been done to get uh, this convention organized has also been kind of nullified because of the absolute uh, crushing of the suggestions that have been absolutely because ultimately hmm. uh, the whole thing the system is taken a political turn mm-hmm. they do what they want they are mm-hmm. not bothered what comes out from us what are our suggestions mm-hmm. they look at their benefits what the ruling will get or who the politicians who have encroached on the land to protect their interest right. what they will benefit according to that they change the rules and mm-hmm. regulations i'm saying not laws but maybe rules and regulations so that they keep the possession of the land there were one case i think so where a politician had taken a uh, shop somewhere in uh, uh, it's also electoral uh, management for example if there are voters who have encroached onto communal land correct. Hmm. migrants etc and uh, they form a vote base correct so, so to satisfy this vote base they have to uh, they, they have to this. bypass the communal land so and we suggest in correct. the this that the attorney is one suggestion which i had suggested in the last day. the attorney should be given power to demolish mm-hmm. illegal encroachment which earlier we used to do now the power lies with the administrator an administrator you know his master's voice because his salary is paid by the government by the government yes, yes. so he doesn't want to act and the excuse is one day i couldn't get the police hmm. i couldn't get this person or this permission was not there i don't have time and the political interference that illegality remains mm-hmm. so we, this was suggested this was very simple it was there in existence it was taken away so why it's not been uh, considered this is the state when we suggest nothing happens for the so this is now 10 12 years so nothing has happened similarly what do you expect the government Correct. getting into this whole subject of illegal encroachments mm. what is interesting is that from time to time politicians have made this attempt to regularize all these illegal encroachments mm. i remember i think in the year 2011 when movin gudino was the uh, deputy speaker of the assembly in 2011 he had moved a proposal saying that all the illegal encroachments will need to be legalized or regularized uh provided all the illegal encroachments over the last 40 years 
will can be regularized for the you know so that people who've been living there for uh, for years and years should not get their lives disrupted. This was again another move. Of course, the fact that it goes against the total spirit of the of the communal system is a different issue altogether. But it just goes to prove what you we were just mentioning yeah. that the political class makes these are what Nigel was also explaining that the political class does these things to benefit their vote oh, bank and not necessarily look into the uh, the rules of the game uh, yeah. as it were. Even now, in this particular, these particular amendments that have now been sought, uh, now we look at 372, uh, which is the 372A, A. where uh, yet again... They want to extend the date. For example, from 15th June 2000, which was the cut-off date, yes. as per the, the hmm. provision. Now hmm. they want to extend it further without saying when. Now it's understandable. Now there are certain persons, like whether go on or non go, and they've been hmm. staying on lands, for example, 50 years, 40 years. Hmm. Those cases could be considered because hmm. they're there for a long time. But to say that people who have come from say 2020 Correct. and encroached onto Komdar land, how can you even uh, regularize such kind yeah, of... Yeah, what problem? is interesting is... Nigel, it should be on case to case. Case to case. Right? With the approval of the... And Komdar most importantly, is, correct. correct. Most the importantly, the consent of the Komdar. should not interfere. Correct. correct. Consent this and with the... case. Correct. Then my second thing, my issue here is, mm -hmm. there are... These are all illegal encroachments. Now this Mr. Mavin Gudin is today the Panchayat Minister. Right. Let him in the same language speak in the Panchayat, saying that illegal can be regularized. That's As right. per the Panchayat Act, irregular can be regularized. But illegal cannot. Illegal cannot. Right. So in this case, why in the Komnidals, illegal is going to be regularized? Yeah. Mm. Right. Basically, right. they should be left to the Komdats. Don't mm. impose any restrictions. Like, don't fix a date with all those before a certain date can Correct. be reached. And what is Let interesting the is, and what is which they want is, to yeah, and what is interesting when you say yeah. that illegal encroachments are going to be made legal yes. from a period that, that you are not mentioning now, which means that you can you can put any date there and and make an encroachment that has happened yesterday so legal today. That's a very I'm arbitrary coming, way of I'm coming, I'm coming back to the same point. Yes. This is all a political game. Hmm. Now in Zwari Nagar, mm -hmm. I had put an RTI. Right. There were 800 encroachments in the year 2000. I see. 800 encroachments. Mm -hmm. Now there must be thousands. Multiplied right. by 10 yes. probably. 800. So to protect those interests, he had spoken that we have to regularize illegal because it's a vote bank politics. Right. right. He wants votes. Mm -hmm. He can say them. He doesn't <coughs> want to know whether uh, it is Komnidar land that is going to go free. To That's incidental. It is correct. Right. So right. he is not interested. He says, I want my votes. Hmm. That's how they win. And we are the scapegoats. Our land is gone. What happened to Zawaris today? We don't have a nap. Uh, nobody is paying uh, the Komnidar. I'm a member of Sankol. We had a general body uh, just last Sunday. We have taken certain decisions about illegal encroachments. See, we, we, when we are owners of the land, we are not getting land. And somebody from outside just comes and encroaches. And he possesses, says, this is in my possession, so it Absolutely should be given to me. And is that justice? Yes, Father, please. And this is yes. going to lead to another this. In the future also, they will encroach and encroach. And they, knowing fully well that they will be regularized. So, they are giving an antecedent to the approaches. Right. Another point I want to note sure, uh, sure. to inform the viewers that when, you know, every Goan has got a small parcel of land. Somehow, parents have kept something. Fields so or right. whatever. Yeah. Yes. Those people are not eligible to own community land because there's an amendment that says that anybody who has land in, in the same Goa, village, yeah. He has to, uh, he can, he's not entitled. He has to, any person who is applying for land in, from the community, he has to file an affidavit that he has no land in Goa. He's a landless, yes, okay. right. correct. Now, right. if that is, case is applicable to Goans, uh, all the encroachers who have encroached into community land should bring the certificate from their uh, uh, state right. saying that they don't have land there. Which is a very important point. Huh? I think it's, a, it's an extremely important point that you're raising this. See, right. for Goans, we do, cannot get our own land. Yes. And outsiders can get without any certificate. Because they say, I don't have land. They, file it, they have a right for 400 square meters. Right. Correct. Father, moving on to the uh, next topic, I'd like to bring all of you in, of course. See, the thing is, we are discussing Komnidats. We are discussing the nature of the institution, how it has protected us. But let us also uh, look at the reality of today. How many of these Komnidads are actually functioning? Do the, do, does, do the Komnidads 
exist as institutions in the way they should be. How many of them across the three three zones are actually functioning? Joao Felipe was telling me that in South Goa there are only 23 of the 90 comunidades who are functioning. Yes. And the comunidades have no money, they have no existence. Of course, uh, some salaries are being paid by the, by the government now, uh, which also gives the government that whole feeling that they are the bosses ultimately. Absolutely. So Father, tell us on both, I mean all of you can, can freely talk about this. Is that, you know, when you have the have comunidades not existing, then how can you protect an institution which is which is dying, not only a natural death, but also a death which is enforced by the way the system is functioning? I think the restoration of uh, paddy fields to the community mm -hmm. uh, instead of tenancy, right. that amendment is to be repealed. Whereas in government cannot happen, amend the law. Because it is not a state-made law, a code of communal. They have amended the code of communal. So, code of communal is not a state-made law. Right. So, since it is not the amendment also becomes null and void. Hmm. No, Father, I was also referring to the fact that there are so many communities that do not seek I, to I, exist coming, in, the, in the functional to, sense. I am yeah. coming to yes. that. Because take our own community of Jew. Mm -hmm. We had, <coughs> our community was first class community. With one uh, clerk, Iskriwao. An assistant clerk. Mm -hmm. So now we haven't got a paise in our kitty or in the bank. Literally. Yes. Literally. We oh, have oh. been maintaining our mm -hmm. community for the last six years, spending our own money. Seriously? Yes. And you and other uh, yes, uh, other committee members. Even we have to fight court cases. The attorney is spending his money. I am spending uh, for this. Yes. Uh, then uh, we the digitalization of certain records. Mm -hmm. We have spent our own money. So, this cannot go on. So, you are saying, saying uh, private individuals who yeah. love Goa from the core of their heart, they are yeah. spending their own money to keep the Goa going. Yes. Yes. While agriculture, uh, when the Agricultural Tenancy Act was not there, right. uh, income was coming <coughs> through the so-called Shidao. Mm -hmm. Every right. other one cultivator was paying something. So, you are actually saying the Agricultural Tenancy Act has harmed the community. Destroyed yes. the yes. Destroyed. destroyed. Practically mm -hmm. destroyed. Because the community then, have been brought under the under this, of the Act. Yeah. Act. Yes. Yes. Then yes. the... Some, but that itself is a violation of yes. the spirit. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Not only spirit, mm -hmm. the, the interference practically in the... Yes. 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 The second thing is uh, the uh, sluice gates. Income of sluice gates for all that for maintaining barns and all that for other things. Yes, Father. So, all this is gone. So, so we, they have to restore that in order to restore the government. They have to uh, they, take away all this. Right. There is a solution to all this. <laughs> See, what has happened, as I was saying, so most of the communities are defunct. Now, there are some, like in uh, South Goa, there are 23 that are functioning. 23 so, out of 90. Out of 90. So, mm -hmm. we were thinking of adopting. Mm -hmm. Suppose I am I am the attorney of, I am community of Nagoa. Maybe there is a neighboring community Kumla. that is defunct. So, I will take care of the functioning of that community mm -hmm. with the assistance of the clerk of my community. Right. So that at least in the face value that community is functioning to a certain extent. Right. They might not get dividends. Even if it means spending your money. Yes. Definitely. Because right, right, see right. this is an institution. Right, right. We cannot destroy this institution which has existed mm. Mm. Maybe, centuries, uh, yeah. centuries 3000 years as far as mm. I know. Mm. So we have to make certain sacrifices financially if it is because also there is a provision in the code as father was saying rightfully saying they are spending their money. If the community owes something to somebody it is not the shareholders who have to contribute to pay the debt. Mm. It is the gaon cars, the zone cars mm. who are supposed to take that burden on their heads. So, so they, are, they are ready to perform the, the responsibility which has been entrusted on correct. them. Correct. Even if it means spending their hard earned correct. money at this point that, of time. That is the, uh, what you call that, the spirit. Yeah. Spirit yeah. of a gaunkari. Even gaunkari. if the system yeah. is defining them. Yes, or, it is I think another way of, uh, another way could, which as you have suggested, like the administrators yes. should be appointed from uh, the senior members of yes. managing committees who have Absolutely. been, who have yes. served on managing committees yes. and then they could be appointed as administrators. Yes. Now, if that is accepted and that forms part of the code, yes. Then these administrators could then you know revive these dead Absolutely. comdas. They could Absolutely. take steps to, Absolutely. the for example, update the member the list of members you know uh, components. N not only that, there is another. Uh, remove, get the properties back which have been That's usurped right. or encroached upon. Yes. So now, uh, the they, now these administrators who are functioning right now, all government officers on deputation. Right. They have little interest in 
reviving dead comrades or you know or taking interest to see whether they are functioning course, or not of course so that's why in my opinion that's one of the reasons why these comrades are uh, falling i mean dying out because they need some kind of revival from the right see, when ever the attorney complains to the administrators office that there is an encroachment he has keeps uh, fixes a hearing mm -hmm. and that hearing lasts for 10 to 15 years It one never, hearing one, one hearing. case like i have Oh. As an attorney, I have several cases where I have complained, and to today that matter has not been disposed. Why? Because nobody can do anything to the administrator, and he gets one phone call. This is my man. That's true. Forget it. Leave it. That fellow completes his building. He con constructs shops. He is running his business. He is getting income. We are hiring lawyers, going to the courts. We are not getting anything. But there it. should be a time limit within which they decide on this increase. Precisely. Case. There's a provision in Article 372 which gives certain summary powers to the administrator to clear out encroachments. Right. Uh, so there should also be introduced a time frame, like you decide these cases within three months. But Nigel, tell me, yeah. as a as a as a as a as a lawyer, when you know these violations are happening, and you know that every literally every code is getting completely brutalized yeah. and crushed, can't there be a a comprehensive A litigation of a of a or, you know of a very serious sort, where a, a body of lawyers and experts get together and move a very serious litigation, either you know high court or, or in the Supreme Court, essentially detailing most of what we've spoken about today and how the entire community system is being crushed systematically by by the state and have a comprehensive litigation to to basically seek relief on all that we've discussed so far. See, so the problem is the courts, either the mm. high court or the Supreme Court. Mm. Cannot direct the government to legislate. Mm -hmm. They can only ask the government to consider legislating. No, but they can also. But they can. The what they could do, for example, yeah. in the case of encroachments, etc. They, they can could, intervene in the violation. They could ask the government yes. to form a commission, for right. example, yes, uh, right. of uh, you know mm. senior members of Komdaz or Hold whatever, mm. to decide how these things can be worked out. That that much they could. Most do. importantly, yes. the code of Komdaz, yes. which we are talking right. of and which we are relying relying on. My point is, in the eyes of the law and in the eyes of the legislative powers, mm. legislature and the judiciary. Does do the court? Does the code of Komnidad have legal sanctity? It certainly does. Right. It is the law. Correct. It is the law. It is, okay. It's a mm. legislative diploma which mm. was brought into force mm. during the Portuguese regime. Right. Which was continued after liberation by right. virtue of the the mm. the administration act. Hmm. What the key issue according to me? What 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 the key issue right now is? What is the extent of control the government can assert over a Komnidad? Mm. Right. Now, in terms of Article Five, as Mr. John Philip pointed out, they have only administrative tutelage. Hmm. which according to me would be restricted to ensuring that the komdats function in terms strictly in terms of the code it's like a cooperative society right the registrars have a limited role to ensure that the bylaws are being complied Absolutely. with the uh, the act cooperative societies act is being followed right. beyond that they cannot uh, interfere at all in the functioning of such a society like and komdats are in the nature of an agrarian cooperative society you know strictly not right. a cooperative so uh, uh, and their association of gaonkars so it's it's a autonomous institution right they are private land owners so they i mean government has a very limited role to play in terms of managing them right. they can only have administrative control in ensuring that they function as per law right so now all these amendments which they seek to bring uh, appointing their own administrators etc these are things which which are dehorse really the spirit of the of the whole system of uh, no, so just that's so like that's what needs a relook yeah, yeah. Like, okay each community that each okay. yeah. community that has got its own managing committee right right which is answerable to the shareholders and the zone cars of right so why is uh, any administrators intervention required or interference required he has to only see that they don't go beyond the law right or the code of the community hmm. other than that it's not required hmm. for uh, now the issue is uh, No, not a specific question, but a general uh, observation that I would want you to make. What is the way forward? And you know, in the sense that we have outlined the pit, deep pit that we are all sunk in. Uh, if there is a light at the end of the tunnel, what would that light be? This, <laughs> uh, this thing requires some this, introspection. Yes, yes. yes. This, uh, this uh, there are many ways in which we could have done. But as I pointed out, hmm. the disruption came. Through the Agricultural Tenancy Act, remove that, hmm. restore the lands to the Komandas, and that will start functioning. Even see now, uh, we had uh, so much uh, breeding of fish in the hmm. uh, in our rivulets. Hmm. Now, due to non-sowing of lands, 
they have filled up we have been filled up that's true well, hardly yes. any this the kazan lands etc entire yeah. system has been destroyed mm -hmm. now to restore the, this it will take years but somebody has to start goa is a heritage land in komandar is also a heritage institution mm -hmm. destroying this heritage history which come from times immemorial it destroying goa totally i feel so those things which the government where they have uh, meddled in the komanda they have to give back to whatever they have uh, interfered there hmm. so those amendments i feel are null and void according to and there are many system consistent uh, yes lawyers who say that yes another thing now they want to if i can go a little loud sure for the sure now they want to amend the code of commanders mm. what they are amending the translation of the code the code is in portuguese they are not amending the portuguese code so this translation which is here mm -hmm. uh, uh, this uh, uh, published by the government i think right. this is not better than this uh, mm -hmm. uh, mr no? mr no. narayan rodriguez no. yes. 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 no. yes. egypt's narayan this is not uh, faithful to the original code there are so many mistakes there and i have even pointed out in the last so you are essentially saying the code of communal that has been translated into, in, into english, english is not completely faithful in terms of translation there are doing some doing some official those of change in what yes. they mean to say there the meanings serious, have been changed yeah father yes. you can just yes. give examples there are serious mistakes in yes. this yes uh, one is article 34 right where it is say the uh, quorum for the sesao it is not meeting it is sesao right. that also is wrongly translated hmm. sesao <coughs> is two thirds of uh, share capital they have translated but in the original portuguese is two uh, dois terços of the capital social social capital not share capital right totally right. wrong right so, so social capital has become share capital in the english translation yes, yes. Right. Uh, not only in one place in more than one which place which is a right. big big difference yes yes then uh, suppose uh, after election of the new committee mm -hmm. uh, the somebody has uh, is not uh, satisfied one can go to the administrator right within 5 days tribunal administrative tribunal no no yeah, administrative tribunal. Admi not administrator administrative, administrative tribunal. tribunal right within 5 days it is uh, <coughs> it is said in portuguese it has fazer recurso while here it is can appeal recourse and appeal is not no, the same, same thing word. appeal one goes when one fails in one, the first one is aggrieved that, that, that yes. should have been petition right right you have to approve so, the petition not, like, not, not like that like that there are many other mistakes that i don't remember now because right. but i have pointed out so this is out, a very good insight yes. that what so, are you amending yes correct you, you you are amending an english translation but there are aspects of it which are See, they, not they, faithful they, to the portuguese yeah, sometimes they do the literal translation right and, right. and this is the whole meaning changes <laughs> this whole meaning being, changes uh, this right. being quoted in the high court mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wrong translation right right and not only that you then unless they do new translation faithful translation and put them put the translation in the public domain, domain. for scrutiny of the public yes that is uh, they should not go for right yes. i feel uh jofri uh, we are just running out of time we have just 5 minutes but as a as a sum up i think let us go back to the uh, the original catalyst which brought us here of course we've discussed a lot and it was a very important discussion but the trigger was the government's move of this you know giving this uh, notice out and asking the communities to respond now what should be the strategy of response to ensure that this does not go through i feel hmm. first and foremost hmm. if the the government has a intention of amending the code hmm. since the article 360 uh, 5, 562 is in force before the assembly they can have a 652 652 yes. is in force they can have a session of 652 it will take 3 days and then take our uh, suggestions and go see the, the and also incorporate all the suggestions that are lying lying, lying with pending. them already yes, pending yes yes correct okay yes. and once for all mm. clear the backlog and let us get into a new this and fortunately for us mm. we have a gaunkar who is a revenue minister Mr. Atan Babushmansara, yes, is uh, a gaunkar of Kortali in Kelosi 
is it kon da ho aise yeah so he should also as a gaut ka take interest in the in this affairs of the community correct correct there yeah. should be a proper amendment don't just don't amend it in parts mm-hmm. take the views of the of the gaut ka and then have a wholesome effective amendment which yeah. gives anas father mandir was said that uh, basically free the communities from the clutches of the uh, tenancy act technical tenancy act that would the, be a little difficult is, at this one thing is that is that is that tenable practically i don't think so i had suggested hmm. in the petition committee which hmm. was hmm. being held in the assembly hmm. complex that we should do commune commune farming right. i don't know because small portions of land small parcels of land you cannot use modern equipment to hmm. do farming hmm. so give all farmers shares equivalent to their land hmm. and, th- and then take over community farming in mm-hmm. the huge you can put large uh, huge machinery and mm. get and give people a choice of cash or kind mm. to, to the value of their land right so that was my suggestion mm. that way i think so it would be all the land which is left fallow mm. would have been given some uh, produce correct so this should be one of the options opt for community farming cut off the uh, tenancy let the land belong to all the farmers correct all have stakes okay. according to the parcel or proportionate to the uh, meters of land that they have in their names and then proportionately give them their uh, rewards whatever in cash or in kind, kind. Okay. simple as that father nigel quick last words 30 seconds each then we then we i'll sum it up and we'll end this oh uh, let father go first yeah, sure. and then nigel yeah, sure. <laughs> Oh, there's a quick 30 seconds on what your last words will be in the you know in taking this I whole feel that uh, since komdal saw <coughs> heritage institutions of centuries mm-hmm. and, uh, from times immemorial everything should be done to protect this heritage right because today we, uh, we are speaking of protecting our heritage in various forms right while the may every other heritage has come from this heritage right the main heritage is neglected Very so important. heritage institution Correct. is what right. heritage so institution. we declare right. they they uh, should do everything to maintain and preserve and uh, take it forward okay. that's N- nigel quick 30 seconds i right. echo what father says i mean the yes. komdad's purpose was excellent for, mm-hmm. where they were formed mm-hmm. this whole institution of gankas this right. cooperative uh, movement i think the government should promote it in tune with the spirit for which they were conceived you know right. in, instead of right. trying to break them away and or to interfere with their functioning mm. make sure that they are revived and they function for the purpose for which they have been created that's to ensure a community living uh, as uh, you know in villages that's the commune of that so yeah yes sir that can say not go out and show to the world yes. Yes. there is yes. uh, we are unique people we unique people yes. uh, which uh, uh are most peaceful in the whole world <laughs> <laughs> well as uh, you know as it happens in life and in governance the only uh, concern that we have is change but when this change actually uh derodes and diminishes the spirit with which either civilizations or laws and systems are made then this change is not for the better it's actually for the worst and instead of going forward we go back and uh, the one question that every political ruler needs to ask himself is to look in the mirror and ask whether the decisions that he or she are taking is good for their children their grandchildren and the future generations and when they leave behind will they leave goa better than what they inherited and i think if the answer to that is no then all that we've discussed today become even more important and if that answer to that is no which it very much is as we all know then i think we need to do a serious rethink and go back to the systems that actually made goa so unique and so beautiful and uh, which actually makes goa stand out amongst a lot of the uh, coastal civilizations in this this part of the country country and the world and i think uh, unless our traditional communities and systems are are preserved goa will be will become a very very pale shadow and actually a parody and a caricature of what it was meant to be and what is most important is one line that we that we picked up from this which really struck a very emotional chord where uh, where the panelists themselves and others said that look it is upon us it is our responsibility to actually even pay for 
the upkeep of the comunidades and get the system going from our own hard-earned money if the need be, even if the state does not support. It just shows how the people of Goa are greater than the systems they elect. On this note, I end this and thank all our panelists for an amazingly incisive debate and a conversation which we hope might make a small impact on the way forward as we try to protect Goa. Thank you. Thank you so much.